Hey guys, DMS here. Today I have for you a list, the ultimate buying guide of things I've recommended for yourself or the audiophile in your family. Let's get into it. All right, now there are things I've reviewed and recommended that are not on this list. The reason being because I'm trying to keep the list not too long. And it's also worth noting that if it's a headphone or a DAC or an amp that's on this list, it is going to be under $1,000. There are ones that I recommend above that, but for the sake of this list, it's already got a lot of things on it. Uh, I'm trying to keep things as short as I can. I know you guys have uh, a lot going on with this holiday season. So here's what we're gonna go through. Amps, headphones, uh, planar headphones, dynamic headphones, gaming headphones, speakers, and then audiophile gifts. Just lots of little knickknacks. Actually some cool stuff in there that I recommend you stick around for. So this stuff at the end is actually pretty cool. So even if you're not into speakers or gaming headphones or anything like that, stick around. You might find something really surprising. And I got my phone out. I'm reading off that because look at this. It's so many things. Amps. In no particular order, these are amps that I recommend. Uh, two of which on here are for very specific use cases, but Adam Stack. It's affordable. It's a great amp combo. You can't go wrong. Anything on this list I think you'll be very happy with, but Adam Stack is a great budget amp setup. The Little Dot Mark II and the Dark Voice if you are running a high impedance dynamic, so uh, or a medium impedance dynamic, so HD 560S, um, HD 600, HD 650, HD 6XX, any of those headphones, those would be great amps. Little Dot Mark II and the Dark Voice. If you can run your headphone balance, 4.4 Pentacon, topping A50S right here. The EL2 from JDS Labs or the Element 2, both absolutely excellent. Basically the same amplifier, but one has a DAC built in, that's the Element 2. And then right over here, we have the topping A90. Absolute beast. The THX AAA1, I wanna throw on this list as a bonus. Um, it's more of an amp where if you like the sound of the 789 but don't want to spend 789 money, the AAA one is a good option. I prefer the sound though of the topping A50S personally. Out of the balance connector that is. Alright, now planar headphones. HE4XX or the 202400i. Both are great. Both are honestly very, very similar. Um, there's pad differences, there's fit differences, but you're not really going to go wrong either way. Modhouse Argon. Closed back, custom made planar, tons of sound stage, a little bit of extra bass. Um, the lamb skin pads have more neutral treble response, whereas the protein pads are a little bit peakier but have more sound stage. So both of those are great. It takes a lot of juice to drive it, but balanced on the A50S I think would do well. Um, I prefer that headphone with the balance connection, which is optional on their website. If you're going wireless, drop Panda still a planar and uh, I really liked that one it was closed back portable I've used it around many times the HE5XX and the Diva uh, wired Diva to be specific both basically the same headphone there's been some people on forums that have said otherwise but if you saw Andrew's video on it it's pretty conclusive that if they're not the same headphone then they could be so similar that you wouldn't be able to tell them apart aside from fit changes either way if that's the sound you're going for I think you'll be fine Heifman Sundara Excellent, very, very uh, detailed planar, less linear frequency response, but pretty much everybody that I know that owns it or has tried it absolutely loves it. And then the LCD2C, which is the LCD2 Classic. One of Odyssey's best headphones. I guess it's still not cheap, but it's a good headphone. Now, Dynamics, entirely different list here. We have the K361, actually just made a video about those. Tiger 300R, a little bit more V-shaped, but it's basically a budget DT1990. HD6XX, you can never go wrong. Um, not bass heavy, not treble heavy. It's got a mid-focus sound, a little bit dark. Sounds amazing and lush on tubes. If you have a uh, vinyl setup, this and a tube amp is just absolutely fantastic. HD560S for someone who wants to have a clean reference and flat sounding headphone that might lean a little bit more on uh, the trebly side, but not too much. Very revealing, exceptional target. Allo S4X, uh, it leans towards an on-ear fit, but this is another headphone that I think is great as a reference. It leans towards the Gross Kemar Diffuse Field target curve. I don't know if I pronounced that right, Kemar, Kemar, but still you get the idea. 
video coming on that soon also, but it is more so, I think, for professional use than it is for um, personal listening, but I don't necessarily advise against using it for personal listening. It's a pretty good headphone. DT1990, classic. It's just, it's been great. It's gonna continue to be great. Kind of V-shaped just a little bit. It is the big brother to the Tiger 300R in my opinion. Focal Alex, one of the best, if not the best dynamic headphones you can buy under, gosh, $1,000, maybe a little bit higher. And then the closed back version of that, the Focal Elegia. Now gaming, gaming headphones entirely different, but surprisingly similar in some ways too. My top recommendation is gonna be the PC38X. You could get the PC37X, which gets you kind of close, but the PC38X is just a little bit better in every way. Now, if you don't want that, you could get a mod mic wireless, and you could use that on basically any of the headphones that we talked about, but I think some of the better ones for it uh, on the budget end would be like the K361 or the SHP9600. Those are pretty uh, cheap headphones that would work well with Mod Mic Wireless. Mod House Argon is super fun with it because it has tons of soundstage. And of course, the Tiger 300R and the HT560S would both be excellent, excellent candidates for using the Mod Mic Wireless. Out of this whole list for gaming stuff, like I said, PC3X is the top choice with PC37X under that. Um, out of the rest of them, I feel like Modhouse Argon would probably be the most fun. Okay, now speakers. Mica RB42, super affordable. I just feel like they're worth having. Even if you have a nice speaker set up, get a set of these, put them somewhere else in your house. They're great to have. You can't beat them for their price. Right above that, Vanatu T1E, transparent one encore. Uh, they are active. Lots of options built in for like DSP and stuff like that, uh, or compressors or limiters to stop them from damaging themselves. They have excellent low frequency response. You can run them USB, Bluetooth, optical, analog in. You can run with a television in your bedroom. That's what I'm doing actually. Television's right there and I have Vanatus on either side and I don't even have to run them with a sub because they have such good bass. And they make my bedroom set up nice and simple. Triangle BR02. Excellent, excellent detail. Um, pretty great price too. This is a speaker I feel like that is ideal for someone who doesn't want to spend a ton of money and is listening to vinyl. I feel like this is just like an incredible speaker for listening to records. Magnapan LRS. Soundstage kings for the price. Open baffle. They need a little bit of space, but you put these in a room and really take the time to set them up right. They produce a space much bigger than the room they are contained in. It's the best way I can put it. But if you want to stick to speakers that have boxes, the SVS Ultraline, the bookshelves or the towers are super fantastic for movies and in my opinion also uh, digital sources. So um, DACs, CDs, computers, anything that's gonna be producing a digital source, I think they're absolutely fantastic. And like I said, great for movies. They lean just a hair warm and they can be good for vinyl too, though my choice for vinyl is definitely going to be the Triangle BR08s or also known as the Bro8s. I just got those in recently for a review, so there's a video coming on those and the BR02s and the center channel, the whole surround sound set, uh, both together and separate. That video is coming pretty soon. But those are just like incredible detail speakers that are ripe for vinyl. Difference between those and the Ultras, I feel like, are the Ultras are a little bit warmer and a little bit more capable of depth, whereas the Triangles are just incredibly articulated, even more so than the Ultras, which surprised me, um, and a, just a hair thinner. So I'll talk more about that in the review, but once again, uh, BR08's absolutely wonderful for vinyl without spending a ton of money. And then this is my section for audiophile gifts or little knickknacks you can get yourself. Now, some of these are cheaper, some of these aren't, but we'll go through the list. First, cork record slip mats. If you're having any issues with static or just want greater isolation on your turntable, get a cork mat to put your record on. SVS isolation feet for subwoofers, or if you uh, don't have an SVS subwoofer, what are you doing? SVS subwoofers are great, uh, though Dayton Ultimaxes are also really good if you want to do a DIY setup. There are sound rise domes, which you can put on the bottom of speakers, also little isolation feet. A lot of people underestimate how much an isolation foot can do for a speaker or a subwoofer. It really goes a long way in helping cut back on rattling, room noise, and kind of helps direct and contain the energy that that speaker. Seriously, they're cheap. Give it a give it a try. And Soundrise stands. I enjoy them. I've used them at my desk at work, and I also have my center channel in my living room sitting on a set of Soundrise stands too. 
room treatment. Now, there's better room treatment out there than this, but these are really cheap. Uh, there's two kits I have linked in the video description. Both of them are two inch by 12 inch by 12 inch per panel. If you're going to get this stuff on Amazon, get the two inch deep panels, not the one inch deep panels. The two inch deep, I've had much better results for for the price. And don't worry, that crazy 3D panels that are on my wall behind me, I do have a video coming on those, but it's gonna be its own dedicated video. I'm not putting them in this video yet, uh, but we'll talk about them in the near future. Mini DSP 2x4, they're 100 bucks. You can plug them up to a laptop, you can do EQ, low pass, high pass, all kinds of cool stuff. It's really fun for audiophiles to tinker with. If you have a family member or if you yourself want to tinker with your setup or anything like that, you could plug one of these up and spend hours or days just fine tuning things, getting exactly where you want. And on the note of that, uh, Dayton UMM6, it's a USB microphone you can use with Roo, Room EQ Wizard, it's free software to measure your room from the listening position. You can see all your speakers measure in the room and tweak them a little bit up and down with that mini DSP. This one is super important, a decibel meter. Protect your hearing. You only get it once. Now this is a cool one because you can actually mount it on the wall or put it on a table somewhere and it'll tell you how loud things are in that room. I'm not going to tell you what specific range is to stay under, but you can do your own research on it, decide where you want to set your limits for how loud you want your volume to be, and just keep an eye on it. Enjoying music is great if you get to enjoy it for longer in your life. And the last thing on my list is these little Casa smart plugs. Uh, they work with Google Home. I think they work with Echoes also. I got a few of them. It's really nice to just be able to tell Google to turn on lights, turn on amplifiers, turn on DACs, things like that. I can sit down on my couch, tell it to turn on my sound system, and music starts playing. Super convenient. All right, we flew through that list. I got to get this video edited and get it out. So that is all I have for you guys today. Uh, a lot of these things I've reviewed on my channel, so if you want to hear more about them, you can check those out. And that's about it. If you like this video, please leave a like down below, a comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can at forum.hifiguides.com. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till the next one, guys. Peace.